Get ready for an exciting and brutal welterweight showdown between two heroes of the undercard. The homegrown family man of Ohio, Quashawn Toler, puts on his gloves again for those that he loves most. On the other side of the ring, young Vlad Panin from embattled Belarus looks to complete another step in his rise to stardom. If you're Ryan Garcia's sparring partner as he is, you know for a fact that your career is going to be one to watch. But the older Quashawn Toler looks to nip it in the bud as he struggles to come out from a couple of very bad years. This is all that led up to this fight, and it's going down in Houston, Texas. Toler continues his return journey. Quashawn Toler was born in Cincinnati, Ohio on the 30th of March, 1992. Like many others of his time, he was born under difficult socioeconomic circumstances. Looking for a way out of the violence and drug abuse that surrounded him, he eventually developed a strong belief in religion. Luckily for him, it was probably very young in his life when he discovered boxing as a means of keeping himself off the streets and living the life of a gangbanger. Of course, Toler is hardly alone in going through such a path to boxing. Throughout his journey, he also developed a strong focus and love for his family members. Details about his time in the amateur leagues are sadly unavailable on the internet. Considering the fact that he displayed some impressive performances in his fights prior to 2020 and afterwards, it can be assumed that he had some notable successes in notable tournaments across Ohio. His pro career started in 2016 against Brian Adi, and he fought similar journeyman fighters all the way till 2019. This can be attributed to a difficult life at home, and a boxer of his potential remaining in the journeyman tier for so long is definitely not ideal. But despite facing journeyman fighters, professional boxing suited him and his humble need. It really seemed that it worked for him somehow, and in some way during these years. However, the 2nd and 3rd of January 2020 would prove to be some of his darkest days. And these two days would throw at his professional career some massive obstacles. His brother was killed in a seemingly random shooting incident. Eugene Hafford was shot in the head before passing away at the University of Cincinnati Medical Center. Despite this blow, he went on to face former UFC fighter turned boxer Clay Collard the next day. He lost a six round bout. Gutted by grieving and the loss while still fighting journeyman, things got even worse as COVID-19 consigned him indoors. Since my loss to Clay Collard, I've learned a lot, said Toler. I've learned a ton from that fight, mainly not to react and move off emotions. I still fought that day after my brother died. I made no excuses, but by no means was my mental state acute enough to compete. Me being the warrior that I am, I just wanted to fight. Fight anyone or anything. However, that loss made me a better fighter. I learned to stay hungry and to not let anyone take away your opportunities at greatness. He got back in 2021 and won two fights. After setting the momentum, he decided to move to Colombia and compete as a fighter there presumably to be free of the baggage that haunted him his whole life in Ohio. The move also had the benefit of giving him the opportunity to fight more fights and learn new things along the way. I love the culture and hard-nosed fighting style. It allowed me some opportunities that were lacking here in the States. I've done my best to take advantage of those opportunities, he explained. Thus, he won all his fights, amounting to a total of six with an extra bout in the United States to fight Gabriel Smith. After defeating Alexander Monterosa in Colombia, he thus returned to take the fight to Vlad Panin in Las Vegas. Quashan Toler stands today as a relatively unknown welterweight pro boxer. It appears that Vlad Panin is a real opportunity to go beyond and go higher in his career than what had been had before the loss to Clay Collard in January 2020. In the lead up to this fight against Gabriel Smith, he said the following, I know that the welterweight division is stacked right now, one of the best weight classes in boxing. I push forward to make my name a big one within the division. Boxing needs someone like me, willing to risk it all for glory, legacy, and future. Maybe the glory is going to come for him, even as he steps into his 30s. Belarusian Brawler Vladislav Panin was born on the 15th of September in the city of Gomel, Belarus. Gomel was historically important to the status of Belarus, especially during World War II, when it was the site of major engagements between Germany and the Soviet Union. By the 1990s, however, the economy of Gomel stagnated heavily, as did the rest of the then newly independent Belarus. Panin was born in a city that rapidly threatened to become a ghost town. Seeking a better life at all costs, his family thus moved to the United States, far away from their native Gomel when he was seven years old. The journey through restarting his life in the US led him to combat sports. We bet that you can't name more than one or two professional boxers from Belarus. 
But the country has produced successful Olympic contenders as its sports system is a near direct constitution of the much praised government training regime of the Soviet Union. For young Vlad Panin, so far removed from Belarus, it was almost like a God-given vocation, but his introduction to boxing would have to wait. He started with sport karate, which is a non-contact form of karate as opposed to full contact styles such as Kyokushin and Ashihara, where a boxer would feel more at home. His divorce from sport karate occurred when he was disqualified from an event for knocking out an opponent. He recounts the events as such in a recent interview. I used to be like, coach, when are we going to spar? I just wanted to gear up and get in there. I did my first tournament when I was probably 12 or something, and I had a match and I hit the guy in the face and I jabbed him and they warned me and they were like, you can't hit the face mask. So then I calmed down and then he scored a couple of points on me and I was like, screw this. And I just did a jumping head kick and I knocked him out and he started crying and then they disqualified me. So I was like, you know what? I need something more real, like more intense. Looking for something real, the disgruntled Vlad Panin soon found himself in a boxing gym. After moving to the University of California, Los Angeles for studies, he linked up with coach Ramon Espada, who still serves as his coach today. His amateur career took him through 40 fights, along with some regional championship wins that elevated his perception as a flashy boxer who could adjust himself on the fly and keep surprising his opponents. What does he want to get out of his career? Well, fame is a given, but he wants to be more than that, to be known as a good fighter and an inspiration to others. Being still so young, the road ahead of him is indeed long. I feel like a lot of fighters nowadays want to be rich like Floyd, but I want to make a difference like Muhammad Ali did. I want to use my voice to inspire people and create change and be bigger than boxing. He said that's the ultimate goal. Fighters compared. Living the kind of life he has, Quashan Toler is known for his resilience and determination in the ring. Indeed, both of these qualities have been tested time and time again, both inside and outside the ring. Despite that, he's been active and consistent as much as possible with the record of 17 wins and one loss. His time in Colombia only made him an even tougher fighter, stepping further into the mantle of being a hard-nosed boxer. Evidently, this has enabled him to show impressive performance in his fights, including a third-round knockout against local Colombian veteran Alexander Monterosa. Toler has also been putting on some serious muscle onto his frame, potentially being able to land punches on Panin that could really hurt. As we all know, athletic bodybuilding with the stamina to back up all the metabolically expensive muscle up is a recipe for success in all combat sports. On the other hand, Vlad Panin is a well-rounded boxer who's flashy and full of stamina to back it all up. Having the likes of Floyd Mayweather and Andre Ward as his template, he can adapt his style depending on his opponent, similar to Andre Ward. He explains it himself. I feel like I'm pretty well-rounded. I can box, I can move, I can use my jab, I can stay long, I can come forward, I can throw body shots. Cut the ring is, whatever the style in front of me, whatever I need to do, kind of like Andre Ward. He would actually mix up his style depending on who his opponent was, because whoever you fight, they're going to give you different opportunities. So you have to be able to be like Bruce Lee said, be water, be formless, be shapeless. So that's kind of like the approach I take. As far as feedback and strategizing, he has access to some top tier talent as his friends and advisors. His sparring partner is of course, none other than Ryan Garcia. And he's also sparred with unified featherweight champion, Joseph Diaz. This seems to give Panin the edge in this fight, helped along further by his comparatively young age. But it's Quashan Toler who is the one with nothing to lose. And you'd be stupid not to expect great things from a fighter who has nothing to lose. But what do you think? Will Quashan Toler start to avenge the crushing back-to-back -back losses that nearly ended him? Or will Vlad Panin walk off into the sunset with his future smiling at him, ready to take him onwards? Leave us a like and subscribe. We'll see you again when the dust settles on the canvas.